On today's very big Totally a Fan, we're paying special tribute to Monty Ohm. We're going to be talking about The Walking Dead Season 5 Part 2 coming out. Jimmy Fallon was saved by the bell. Marvel's Collector Core. Teen Titans show is still moved along. And Legend of Zelda is coming to Netflix. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Totally Fan, the show where I, a total fan, come to you not bringing news in movies, TV, video games, comic books, everything revolving the world of fandom, and I bring that information to you. Before we get started, we want to pay a very special hat tip to Mr. Monty Ohm and his family and friends. We first heard about Monty Ohm in about 2007 when he had his Dead Fantasy series on YouTube. Before that, he did Haloid, which was uh, Master Chief from Halo and Sam is from Metroid, and they were kind of duking it out, and it was really awesome, very spectacular animation sequence. With Dead Fantasy, what it did is it combined uh, Square Enix, or um, or I guess it was Squaresoft at the time, had Final Fantasy characters mixed with Dead Fantasy. In a very similar fashion to Halo, they were both duking it out in a crazy martial arts fight, and they even included some materia, which was pretty cool later on. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Monty Ohm passed away, I believe, two weeks ago, uh, due to severe allergic reaction, he had to just a regular medical checkup. Now, Rooster Teeth, uh, they took him in in about, tw I think in 2010, and they confirmed it at PAX East that it was happening. And during there, he was so awesome with what he did for Red vs. Blue, which is a show that we love here at Tolay Fan. Uh, he did a lot of the CGI fights and stuff like that that you saw in the later seasons. Um, and then he also did... Uh, RWBY or what some people call Ruby. I haven't got to see it yet to enjoy it, but um, I did see various trailers of it uh, when it was first being released, and it truly was something awesome. Now I know a lot of people cosplay as that, so we definitely, you know, we, it's definitely big. You know, we see it a lot when we go to conventions and things like that. Now Rooster Teeth, they did their own tribute video. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to know Monty Ohm as well as other friends or family or even fans. Other fans have gotten to. Uh, but we definitely, you know, we appreciate what his work. Um, it was something truly inspiring, and we're sad to see him go. Uh, so for you, Mr. Monty Ohm, to your friends and family, and everybody at Rooster Teeth, uh, major hat tips from here at Totally a Fan. So The Walking Dead Season 5 is awesome. I got to see it last night, and what's great was before going up to it, they released the first two minutes uh, up until the, uh, right before the, the song started playing and man those two minutes hyped up everybody everybody all over twitter and facebook were tripping like their brains were just melting they couldn't wait and then finally when they got to show the episode right after they played better call Saul, which is also a great show which i liked and i definitely recommend it it's a spin-off of the breaking bad series um apparently uh chris hardwick on the talking dead was like oh everybody you know we need to deal with it now so it's kind of Funny, but I know everybody was tripping because I was tripping. So that came out, and uh, it was awesome because they got to do uh, live Twitter questions. Fortunately, now it's over, so there's no point, but they got to do that as well. So we're super excited. We hope you're excited. We are Totally Fan. We love uh, The Walking Dead. We talk about it all the time, so we're super excited. Um, and we're not the only ones. Apparently, 15.6 million fans tuned in to watch it this weekend. Um, it is freaking phenomenal. I can't wait for the next episode next week. Jimmy Fallon decided to take us down memory lane through, during his high school days. He attended Bayside Hyde, apparently. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Bayside Hyde was a very popular high school in the show Saved by the Bell that came out back in the day. I think it was like late 80s, early 90s. I know I grew up with it. Um, it was freaking phenomenal. Uh, we got Zach Kelly, Slater. Um, it was it was awesome. Uh the only thing was that we were kind of missing Screech. Now, I know Screech was on uh, Celebrity Fit Club. Um, apparently, he was a real douche on the show, and he's in jail, so apparently he wasn't there. And the actress who plays Lisa was missing. I couldn't figure out why she couldn't make it, uh, but unfortunately, she wasn't on it either. Now, Jesse was there, and Jesse was one of my favorite characters because she was really intelligent, and uh, I don't know. I like Jesse a lot, and so she was there as well. And it was awesome that we got to see everybody. Uh, now, they played a lot of bits from their old episodes, uh, you know, ranging from all over. And it was really cool. It was a really awesome reunion. And everybody looked almost exactly the same. Obviously, you can tell wigs, you know, were used for certain characters. But it was freaking phenomenal. Now, apparently, CNN tried to cover it. And they didn't know anything about it. I do. I did see the, that report. Um, and uh, they had to call somebody who knew, you know, 
uh, what the scenes were from and everything like that. But it was kind of funny that CNN didn't know about it and they're covering it. Uh, what's great was that they did cover it because it was so big. You know, who doesn't know Saved by the Bell? Obviously, the next generation, but Saved by the Bell was awesome. It even went to college and then they had the like a summer vacation kind of thing it was freaking phenomenal so i was so happy we got to see that now supposedly we were going to get a family uh full house reunion going on we're not sure about that but with this you know this kind of gives me hope that maybe we might get to see a little bit more reunion even if they're not uh shows complete shows uh just to see little snippets like this that jimmy fallon does because i know he does a lot he did the one for full house uh, the last time we talked about it and he's doing this one with say by the bell so Hopefully we can see more of these. So the Teen Titans show is still going. However, shows like Arrow, Flash, and of course the DCCU, the DC Cinematic Universe, they're kind of shadowing Teen Titans right now just because Teen Titans is still kind of getting its gear going um, and everybody's too excited for Arrow and Flash. Uh, there's also Constantine and there's also a bunch of other stuff too from the DC Universe that's coming out that it's hyping everybody up. But with the Teen Titans, uh, it's starting to come back from the shadow, reason being, because we now got our full cast. Sorry, not cast. We got our lineup. We got the name of the heroes that are coming out. Obviously, we're going to go with the originals. However, it was reported that we're not going to get Beast Boy and Cyborg. Beast Boy, probably because of all the cinematics and probably all the makeup they have to do, probably not something that TNT wants to have on their hands. And then Cyborg, obviously, because he's going to have his own movie in the DCCU, and he's probably not uh, somebody that they're going to want to use, especially since in the New 52, he is part of the Justice League rather than Teen Titans. Speaking of which, Teen Titans is looking to go through the New 52 with some of the characters that are going to be in the group itself. We'll hit, hit that in just a bit, but our lineup is going to be with Dick Grayson, not as Robin, though. We're going to get him as Nightwing. Um, I think I'm following the guy who's going to play Nightwing on Instagram. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, he's posted up some pictures, and he seems like a cool cat. Uh, I don't know too much about him, though, um, but it is confirmed that we are going to get Nightwing and not Robin, but we are going to get Dick Grayson, which is great. Starfire is going to be the next character we're going to get. Um, they're probably going to play on the relationship between her and Nightwing. I don't doubt it. Uh, and another character that they're going to have is Raven. So those three are the originals. Some of the characters that are not part of the Teen Titans original cast are going to be Barbara Gordon, who most likely is going to be playing as Oracle and not as Batgirl, but that remains to be seen. Uh, we're not sure about the details on that yet. And then the two new cats is going to be Hawk and Dove. Now, Hawk and Dove are are part of the current Teen Titans in the New 52, um, and they basically work as a tag team type of group of heroes. They have uh, super speed, I think agility, uh, some of the basic hero powers, uh, but they kind of have to share it between each other. They have to like transfer energy between who uses what and who uses more, things like that. Again, they are part of the New 52, so they will be included in this version of the Teen Titans show. So what's the Marvel's collector core? Well, basically it's Marvel and Funko teaming up in a loot crate style of uh, giving away some free stuff. Now supposedly it's all gonna be 100% exclusive stuff only brought to you from the Marvel collector's core. Included, you're gonna get a t-shirt, some pop vinyls uh, every month, um, and a couple accessories to go with it. The pop vinyl that's really big is the exclusive Hulkbuster Iron Man pop vinyl that's coming out. That's got a lot of people buzz. I know a lot of people signed up for it. Me, personally, I'm not 100% sure if I want to sign up for it. I love pop vinyls. I mean, I got here, I got Thumper. Uh, I got the Rocketeer. I got a couple Captain Americas. This one, uh, this one, I got a couple more on the way. I even got Baloo from the Jungle Book. And then, of course, I got myself the Baby Groot, which, by the way, all you guys got to do is subscribe, and this is yours. So I have all these fun little friends with me, uh, but personally, I love Captain America, um, not so much as the other heroes. I do love them, but not as much as I do Captain. So I'm not 100% sure yet if I want to sign up for Marvel Collector's Core. I know it's all exclusive stuff, but I'm kind of on the fence about it just yet. But you guys can definitely sign up. The first packages don't get shipped till April, with June possibly being the one to be uh, Ant-Man as a special sneak preview for the movie getting ready to come out. Now again, this is a Loot Crate style uh, feature, um, so you gotta pay you know, your, your due or whatever and then you get a uh, box each month. Um, Loot Crate is another thing that we're kinda interested in signing up for. We're not sure just yet. We definitely, you know, depending on if we get Marvel Collector's Core versus Loot Crate, we're definitely gonna have uh, the, the box openings like everybody else does. I think it's cool to see. And then we might be giving some away um, we might be giving away some free stuff as well to go with it. 
Uh, so definitely, you know, look forward to that if we go that route. Again, MarvelCollectorsCore.com. Go there. You guys will be able to sign up and do what you guys got to do. And again, the exclusive is the Iron Man Hulkbuster uh, pop vinyl that everybody's excited for. The Wall Street Journal apparently is reporting that Nintendo and Netflix are working together, very closely together, on a Legend of Zelda series getting ready to come out. Now, right now, we don't have too many details on what the show's actually going to be about, but we can pretty much guarantee that it's going to feature Young Link, obviously. Um, it's even possible they could show an older Link, but Young Link is very popular in the series. He's even in the Smash Bros. game, so we're pretty sure that he's going to start off young. Now, the tone... They kind of want to follow with Game of Thrones. However, they do want to make it a little bit more family friendly. And of course, it's a Nintendo, it's uh, Legend of Zelda. I'm pretty sure they are going to want to go a little bit kid friendly with it. Uh, but it's very interesting to see and I'm so excited for it. I can't wait to see what else comes out with that. Again, we don't have a specific release date just yet. But this is something that we're super excited for. Now, Nintendo and Netflix both haven't commented just yet on what the show is going to be about. Uh, but you know, we'll, we'll wait to see what's going on with it. All right guys. So that's the show. But before we go, uh, we want to remind everybody, uh, in regards to Monty Ohm hat tip to you guys. Um, you know, right now the family, they're hurting right now. They definitely need their privacy in the matter like this. So for you guys, uh, Rooster Teeth has extended out that if anybody wants to do anything, please be creative with it. Um, they do have a, uh, GoFundMe project. I don't know if it's over yet, uh, but we did have that linked on totallyafan.com. Please go check that out if you guys want to help out with the family. In addition, don't forget, the baby group Pop Vinyl can be yours. All you guys got to do is subscribe. We only got a couple subscribers and we're super excited. Now, this contest is going to end on February 14th on Valentine's Day. So, if you guys need a Valentine gift for your boo or for your, your baby girl, whatever, baby group, everybody loves them. Do it. All right, guys, so that's it for Totally a Fan. Um, you know, if you guys have any other questions, comments, or topics that you guys want to talk about, make sure you mail it, book it, tweet it, or let us know, or you can post it down in the comments below. Uh, so that's it for us here at Totally a Fan on this very special, very huge episode that we just, so much awesome information we need to talk about. So we hope to see you guys on the next one. So until then, see ya.